So Kun Pailin, uh, you've been working with PTT uh, for years, and you've been traveling a lot. You have a lot of you know international experience. And Kun Vichai yourself, um, you've been working in the coffee business. You know, you've been you know to that coffee plantations. <laughs> you think you uh, you'll be here to talk with us? A lot of things. Uh, well, one of the things that I would like to clarify is that I don't think Doi Chang has, you know, rivals or competitors in this business. Are you sure? Are you sure there's no problem? Well, <laughs> coffee, it's coffee then. You think that you would gain the client loyalty? Are you sure? You think that these two guys sitting next to you, are you rivals? Uh, for, for you, Kun Bicha, coffee is everything in your life. And Kun Ingawad, you too. Um, but in terms of creativity, Kun um, Panu, uh, Panu um, you think who's going to have more creativity in terms of doing business? I mean, if you happen to be rivals? I think we all, you know, equal in terms of creativity. <laughs> well, um, I, myself, um, uh, wouldn't see, you know, our PTT involved in this business. I think we're from a different market. We, we, we're not aiming at the same target. So, um, now it's come to the very important questions. How would you see Thailand resort to this kind of innovative technology in order to drive the country into the new, you know, economic integrations of ASEAN. Well, uh, personally, I would like to say that Thailand has been, um, you know, very far. We, we've been coming very far in terms of, you know, the economy. We're not a primitive, you know, agricultural-based countries anymore. We, we've been industrialized a lot. I could say that Thailand is the core leader among the five continental ASEAN regions, you know, consisting of five countries. So our main mission is to guarantee that we have the energy stability, you know, in the regions. And now I think we do have to expand our business, expand our, you know, advance, advancement in terms of technology, in terms of, you know, energies. And we do have to think what kind of tool that we have to resort to, to in order to gain that kind of stability and advancement. So you're, are you saying that, you know, you could move up to the next steps, you know, changing your own image of company? I would say yes. And for example, in the case of Japan and Korea, well, they once had, you know, uh, the oil company working on the oil, crude oil refinery and stuff. But you know, nowadays they, they totally change. They become the knowledge-based company already, and they have that national, you know, flagship oil company available as a knowledge base. And uh, PDD is going to the same directions. We're going to work 24/7, you know, online. So uh, we're going to have a new kind of front office. And here, I mean, we're going to have that kind of front office available directly from the touch screen of our mobile, um, cell phone. And the products that we're going to put on sale, it's going to be the same. But the way how people, you know, get our products is going gonna, is gonna to change. They don't have to come to our shops or to our companies, but they can have that online. So we're going to have the web and web-centric.
So everything is going to be controlled from one particular point. Just like, you know, when Barack Obama's, you know, commanding the U.S. troops when they have to, you know, crack down all the terrorists and the men of um, Osama Bin Laden. It's going to be the same way. We're going to work like that. We're going to have a regular centric office just like that. And we're going to go to, this, to that direction for sure. So do you think that the rest of the countries, the people that, you know, not very experienced with that kind of technologies could catch up with that? What do you think? In, in terms of, you know, the culinary or cuisine um, business? I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of that. I think Thai people are very potential. But the things that we have to work on is to find our own, you know, positions in the world market. I, I personally am very confident in the, you know, potential of Thai people, you know, in, in, in many sectors, in many areas. In the advertisement industry, for example, we, we've been working hard and, and we get a good response from the world market, actually. So, um, you know, in, in, we can actually create any kind of, you know, breakthrough, you know, advertisement knowledge and we can contribute that to the world. Or in terms of fashion, for example, Thailand became the paradise of fashion industry um, now in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we do good at that. But the thing is that we need to think how we're going to manage that, how we're going to work on that in a very effective way and to make it clear that we, 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 we write on track. Now, it, uh, it turns out that a lot of, you know, countries, especially in this area, for example, Singapore, already claims that they are, you know, on the track too. Like, they, 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 they have such an advancement and expertise, especially in terms of the technology that we're talking about. How about that? A, a lot of my friends ask me that too. They ask me the questions, why so? Uh, you know, they ask me about freedom of expressions, and so um, uh, referring to what Kunan said earlier, you know, about the factors that could contribute to the better, you know, development of this kind of technology here in Thailand, I, I, I do agree that we should focus on the human resources, like, you know, Kunan mentioned too, because that's important apart from working on the technology. So I think uh, in order to get that kind of investment and to be competitive with our neighbors like Singapore, I think we do have to get our people ready by training system that to be implemented to create what we call or expect to, to gain, that is a quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, the quality of the people, because what we have right now is just the quality of materials that we've been using, not the quality of people. So everyone should be responsible at best uh, for their task. No matter how well attired you are, if you do your work at your role and, um, at, at your base, I think that, that, that's cool. And that's what we have to realize, actually. This is what our neighboring countries like Singapore or in the far one, like you know, Korea or Japan, already realize that they gotta invest, you know, their money in human resources to create that kind of quality
for the people who works in the business or work in the industry. Are you, um, do you agree, Amisha? Yeah, I do agree with the word quality. Yeah, for example, the case of Deutsche. Well, um, back then I lived in the jungles, and I knew that a lot of people lacked that kind of opportunity provided by the government. A lot of people from the government would came talk to them with a lot of propaganda, but nothing, you know, carry out successfully in terms of the policies, implementations, to help them get that kind of access of technology to the new world. Now may I ask you, um, Deutsche has been very successful in the past 10 years. Apart from that creativity, apart from that discipline that people would have, you know, apart from that quality, what else uh, people from Deutsche have? to, you know, to gain that kind of success? Well, first of all, we kind of realize that uh, the problems that, you know, happened at the time uh, were not solved, you know, quite well. So we kind of, you know, work on something that really helped the people in, you know, this particular area to get out from that difficulties. Uh, we brought a lot of international corporations, like for example from German or from any kind of international organizations to help, you know, those people who consider, you know, part of the minorities in this particular area. Okay, so because they've been, you know, taking advantage you know, by some people, especially from those middlemen who come to, you know, the area and buy their products. So we realize that this is a problem. People still in need. But nobody would pay attention to, to, to them, to their problems. That's why, you know, from time to time they opted for some other options which is considered to be very, you know, dangerous and, 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 and not really useful for the society. It's just like, you know, the opium, for example, uh, which is something illegal, actually, but they did think that it's illegal because they need that. They need to create income. So from this, you know, situation, I could see that actually people, even though they live in that remote area, but they, 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 they have certain qualities already. They have discipline, they have patience, but what they lack is the opportunity from the people outside their community. So that's why we came and assist them to create that opportunity for them. And actually, you know, people in this area knew coffee very well. They actually plant coffee for years. But they, they, they got supported in the wrong way. You know, a lot of people would end up planting garbage, for example, or some other kind of plants. But we came here with the right choice. To fix that, you know, to change that kind of, you know, plants that they've been cultivating for years.
to make them turn into coffee. That's something they know, they, they, they know pretty well. And make it commercial. That's the opportunity that we provided to them. I do believe that if Deutschland could do that, other organizations, other state-owned organizations or projects or whatever could do that too. So we do realize that we need to give that opportunity to bridge the gaps by using education, by you know, making the kids in the community um, be able to read so that they can transmit or pass on the knowledge to their parents, to their grandparents, or to the people around. And that's the truth. That's you know, the reality that, 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 we, that we've been facing. Now when it comes to the uh, consumption of your products, uh, there would be some more problems occurring. So I think you might face some difficult times in order to um, you know, make your products acceptable or accepted in the market in order to educate those uh, mountainous people you know, or the minority communities over there to produce such a quality for your products in order to um, satisfy your target client's need in the market? Well, uh, for, you know, to answer your questions, I think the most important thing is the quality. We can say that we can, you know, afford that kind of quality according to the size of the plantation, the coffee plantation that we have expanded, you know, now we have over 300 hectares, you know, of coffee plantations. It means our business grows, actually, because we, we, we can create that kind of connections between the minorities, you know, that we have to rely on. And uh, talking about the quality, I I, I would like you to explore the quality of Doishang that we have. Well, you can compare to that of Starbucks, for example, and you would be able to realize why we, 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 we got a good response from the market. That's why we came up with our Rowan brand at the end, because of the word quality. But how to gain that quality? It totally depends on our, you know, our men. Mm -hmm. So now we have our products available at international markets, for example, in Japan, and the pronunciation of our brand would be, you know, vary a little bit. Doi Chang, for example, which is in Thai, would be Doi Chang. And, and the problems that we're now facing is that there are a lot of, you know, counterfeits or fake products or, you know, an infringement of patent at international markets. Um, it could be in China. Or, you know, they would change a little bit the title of the brands and they, 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 you know, adopt their own brand. That's what the problems that we face right now. The, the way that Deutschland runs business is going to be sustainable. Thailand is walking towards um, the era of post-carbonated drinks. It, it means that we're going to, you know, take some, you know, kind of drinks like coffee more and more not, you know, those sweet kind of drinks anymore. So that's why we have the lifestyle that in which people, you know, take coffees, okay? And that's additional from the original market that we have for drink or beverage. Yeah, but I mean that the business uh, of 
couldn't reach out, for example, is not a typical, you know, business that they resort to the international or standards that is internationally standards that is kind of, you know, advertisement, you know, it's just Deutschland, you know. Well, we can, you know, put this into two directions. Uh, the markets that we are talking about here could be divided into two types. For example, PTT has, you know, kind of one-stop, one-service, um, kind of gas stations that, you know, you can go and have all the business like laundry, it's, you know, you can eat or you can fill up your, you know, gas at the same time. And, you know, particularly talking about coffee, uh, of course, uh, you know, people who, you know, live lifestyle like this need coffees and we have the coffee available for, for them, you know, in such uh, a service. And, 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 and that's the change that we spotted in the business already. Mm -hmm. One of the directions, you know, from the two that I mentioned. For me, the, 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 the way the Deutschland run the run this is, I mean, the, the sustainable kind of way, like that, that, you know, help supporting the families, you know, that involved in this kind of business. I think, yeah, it's possible. I do believe that there are people who want to run the business like that too. But, you know, the other might not want some kind of, you know, business like this. Uh, they might opt for, you know, that of, what could um, Pailin mention earlier, you know, which is, you know, a bigger scale. But uh, what I can say is that uh, the sustainable, you know, way to run a business like Doi Chang's ones, uh, it's very popular right now, it's getting more and more popular because it's something that reflects or represents the uniqueness of the community that get involved in the business so that you can sell that characters, you know, of the community, you know, the cultures and all things that related to the walk of life of the people in that particular um, area too. So if one day, you know, a business tycoon or the, giants and business entrepreneur come to you uh, to ask you to sell your role in a sustainable business you know um, to them would you would you do that well if I I wanted to sell that I would have done that four years ago Yeah, I, 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 I do have, you know, some experience like that, you know, people came to me, asked me to sell my, door, my own business. For me, you know, money is not important. That, you know, big sum of money that they offer to me, I, I mean, it's not important to me. You know, I explain that to my kids, you know, to the people around me. That is not important. Because what's important thing is, uh, you know, to have something to generate income for, you know, for us. Okay. All right. And what we have, it's way better than what we had in the past, you know, having to plan opiums, you know, kind of things that consider to be very dangerous. It's much better. And, and, and uh, like this, we, we, we are powerful. We can educate our children. We can send our children, you know, to have a better education in the outside world.
So that is uh, your own nature, okay? To start a business like that, it's not easy. I mean, it's not going to be easy for some other people to run the same business that you have, right? Of course, they can, because we do have some models. So, for example, if today they happen to listen to what you said and they got and they get inspired, is it possible? Yeah, but you know, you need a commitment. You need to be determined, very determined. So um, it's not going to be easy. Like when you invest your money and you're going to be determined, you know, no step backwards. That's not easy. Or you know, to create, you know, or to form up uh, an entrepreneur who you know has the same style as that of Kun Wicha. You think it's easy? I don't think that's easy. Yeah. Um, the thing is, we need commitment and individualism as well, the uniqueness. Well, first, when um, PTT created the Amazon brand for coffee, we, we like, bought a lot. That's, we determined and we r ran you know, a very strong marketing campaign. And we focus on, you know, what we all said or we all mentioned, the quality. So that means that uh, the vendors or the entrepreneurs who want to run the Amazon, you know, coffee, cafe need to come and learn from us. And, and I think we've been very successful for the past 10 years. Thanks to the way that we run our business like that. So the strongest quality or the quality that you consider to be very crucial or important, or important you know, to run the business in this world, okay, even you know, those of good growth. Okay. What are they? What should be those qualities that the new generation should adopt in order to be that successful? It's tough, I know. A lot of people might get away from that. Well, for personally, I am a Bangkokian. You know, I live a comfortable life, and I took, and it took me a lot of time to realize. But the way that I ran my business made me realize and see how beautiful when you know those kids you know who been sent out to get education from outside world that came back to you know the community and contribute to the better you know uh, community that's what I would call my pride actually and, and we created, you know, Deutschland Foundations and, uh, you know, the 30% of the income that we gained or that we earned, that we would, would go to the foundations. See what, they, what we, we've done for them too. Initially, we didn't think much about the business. Uh, what, what we focused on is just how to make people survive in this area, but then it happened to turn out as a business, so that's, that's, that's successful. Uh, in the past, you know, people in this particular area face a lot of difficulties. They don't have, they didn't have the uh, medical treatment, the right medical treatment, or the, the, you know, the, the sanitary um, matters uh, was very bad. Okay, uh, the medical tools and all this stuff was pretty bad. But now we've, we have gained a lot of, you know, force and um, resources in terms of the medical supplies. And, and, and we donated it too, you know, to the um, 
local administrative organizations, like what we call emperor in Thai. Now we're doing everything, every single thing, to you know, enhance the potential of the people in the community. I would say, I would 100% say that we grow because the business grow because of the people, not because of me. And now you see anyone who can come up and you know, continue what you've been doing. Well, apart from the South America, you know, coffee, apart from the South American coffee base, which, which is very well known in the world market, now I think Europe and America, so the United States of America, realize that they also uh, have Thailand as a hub for cup, coffee pr pr uh, produce. So I, I dare to say that, you know, this is a successful project and if we can do it, you know, the others can do it too. And the quality that we have, it's hard to believe a lot of our clients came to take, you know, a cup of coffee, you know, they came with their families or people who, you know, been around playing golf, especially in Chiang Rai area. And they asked me, is this from Thailand? Is this the coffee that you mix? Yeah, I said yes, with a lot of confidence. And I, 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 I am confident about the price that we, that we set up too, because compared to the comp quality that we have, it's, it's reasonable. So that means uh, those who take your coffee need, you know, to pay a lot. Well, uh, yeah, but you know, everything happened because of the good response that we have from, you know, the clients. Okay, at first it's, it was hard to sell our products, of course, you know, not over 5% that, that we could sell. But now it's successful. So it's kind of word of mouth then. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's word of mouth, you know. You know, the price that we have available in the Thai market is very high. And it's like, what? That's so expensive. You know, like 1,000 baht or something, that's already expensive in Thailand. But in Japan, for example, in the Japanese market, they would sell it at 9,000 baht or something, and they're happy with the price. And now we have a lot of demands from our clients. You know, we've we we we've been working on you know on you know our clients' demands, and it's very happy. And now I'm quite happy because I could sell it at two thousand eight hundred baht per package, and 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 people still you know buy that, and I'm happy. So I once again would like to stress that if I can do it, everybody can do it. So this is not all about the money, actually, you know. It's about what we have to do and pass on to the next generations. We're talking about the quality of life that we can, you know, offer, you know, to the people in the community, to the people of the next generations. And you know, if people don't have that welfare or the quality of life, 
you know, that we try to work on, people would do, you know, or commit the wrongdoings, something illegal. And I don't blame them because the situation would force them. But if we have that kind of quality, you know, for them, they wouldn't do that. Now, Kumpano, if you know, you know, someone you know, from this generation, I mean, the new generation, comes up and asks you how to be successful, just like you are, but then a lot of things going on, you know, the new trends going on, things keep changing all the time. What should I do? Well, I think for me, this is. Um, a whole different situation compared to that of Kun Bisha. I view that if we have to work, you know, in the urban or cosmopolitan kind of environment like this, what's important is you have to know how to create something that could be extended from, you know, what you believe or, you know, your um, individual you know, um, fates. We need to know what we want. We need to be our own. Uh, we need to be on our own way. You know, we need to keep that kind of quality in us. We cannot be lost. So the identity is very important. Okay, identity is very important because if we know who you are, who our you know clients is, it's easier to deal, you know, with your business. So if we know that uh, our position is very important. You know, our stance is very important. Our identity is very important, so that we can. You know, we, we, we can't be in the business. We can't actually compare our, you know, self to, you know, um, that of PTT or that of Doi Chang because we're different. So, um, Kun Palin, someone from a new generation, come to ask you, what should I do to become successful just like you? You know, to be this famous, to be this good, to be this competitive, you know. But th then the world keeps changing, a lot of trends, you know, come up, and I don't know what to do. How would I, ad you know, adjust myself in the world of, you know, the changing technology like this? Two things. Well, you need to act quick and you need to think quick and think different. Like for example, in the case of PTT, we have you know, our business in uh, 30 different countries and we spend a lot of money, we invested a lot of money in our business, even more than what the government had for its you know, budget in its fiscal year. So we kind of we act very quick. And the other thing is we, we think different. You know, we have different ideas. We know that in this whole world, nobody want to look like some other people. Uh, everyone want to look unique. So each one has their own lifestyle. So, uh, you know, the business that we have should be, you know, in another, you know, segment or areas that suit, you know, the people who have the same kind of taste or, you know, live the same kind of walk of life that our products want to, you know, want to fit in. I think that one thing that I do agree with everyone and with what Kun 
and then you know talked about is that before we you know want to train ourselves to be good at something we need to know our flaw and we need to realize that probably we're not good enough and we're ready to get improved and we need to be a good person because if you only you know good at something but you're not a good person that's not gonna you know bring you to the success because there are a lot of good people you know in the business but you know good here it's mean morally good too and that kind of moral quality is important I do believe that if you're good at something, you have a very high skills, but you're not, you know, a good person, you're not going to survive in, in the business. It's not, you know, possible that one skillful person would control the, you know, resources, national resources that we have or any kind of materials that we use in the business. It's, uh, it's impossible. I don't believe in that. Why don't we have, you know, this two-in-one quality, like, you know, skillful and good at the same time here in Thailand. You know, this kind of quality, why it's so rare. I, I think, yeah, we do have some, but not, you know, a large number. Because it's very hard to be good and skillful at the same time and to make it, like, perpetual. It's, it's not easy. Or it could be that someone who's been good enough, and then again, it's kind of loss of control when, you know, uh, he turned greedy. Being skillful only, for me, it, it's not okay. Because, you know, if you think of the law of the mod modern nature, it's impossible because the, the nature would control everything. They would select, you know, uh, the, the best one to be survived. Uh, but, you know, if being skillful means um, a quality that's going to make you survive in this kind of harsh environment of the professional um, world or to do the world that we live today with, in which a lot of civilizations get involved, be it American one, be it or the Chinese one, that might be coming back. We don't know that, but the, the, the truth that we already acknowledge is that you know, the modern nature won't allow the you know, person who is only skillful to get to the top. The good value in you, I mean morally speaking, need to be part of, you know, that person too. I, that's my personal belief though, you know. What about you? What do you think? I think, you know, the, this world is getting too much competitive, you know. Yeah, in terms of wealth, in terms of, you know, for, for you, what would you define uh, the quality of being good or the goodness? For me, uh, to be good or to be a good person is to be aware of the righteousness. Uh, for me, it's something, it should be something that, you know, being cultivated inside you. So, um, you know, those kind of good qualities in you, the, the, the values, the good values in you, I mean, not the skillfulness, would help you to, you know, to create more income because it's something, you know, inside you and it's going to make things sustainable. That's, that's how I teach the kids, you know, in my community. So Kun Panu, could you help wrapping up a little bit about the connections between creativity, innovative technology, and morality? You think these three things can go hand in hand together? Okay, last sentence, last word. Well, maybe Google uh, has no conclusion either. So I think it's all about the balance. Well, the society has to have all of this. It needs to strike the balance between these three things in order to run a community or, you know, 
organizations, we need to find the right directions. We need to find the clear-cut uh, resolutions and the clear-cut solution for the problems. For example, you know, we all walk to the same directions. Actually, I mean, uh, Singapore, for example, uh, it's walking on the same path too. You know. So. This is all from us, from our three speakers, from PTT, Greyhouse, and Doishan. So let's give them a round of applause. Give them a big hand. Thank you very much.